So today we're going to look at one of the most useful accessories for the micro bit, which is, of course, the speaker. So I've got this speaker uh, from Monk Makes is the name of the brand down there. You can see it in the bottom left. That's what it looks like in the back. There's a little web address. So it's a very simple speaker. It's got three connections, N, 3V and GND. So N means input. So this is going to be our data input, which will control when the speaker will actually operate. We've got our 3V, which is the power, three volts and our GND stands for ground, which will help us complete our circuit. So of course, we're gonna collect it to the micro bit, and to do so, we're gonna need some crocodile clips. So I've got three crocodile clips right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it. And of course, if we remind ourselves about the micro bit first, the micro bit has a bunch of data pins along here. But using crocodile clips, we can only really access zero, one, and two. Then we've got a three volt and a ground. So it's pretty self-explanatory where we're gonna connect the speaker to. We can pick zero, one, or two as our data points, and I'll probably just go with zero. So let's go ahead and connect the two devices. Typically, we'd connect the ground first, just as a safety precaution especially when we're dealing with any sort of voltage. And just on that, on the micro bit with a crocodile clip, I find one of the best ways to connect it is like that. So some people try to connect them like that, but sometimes this can tendency to slip between the pin numbers. So these are all little pins in between here as well. But the safest and sturdiest way is like that. So we connect the ground first. So I've now got the three connections made between the two devices, making sure that I add the three volts last. In this case, it doesn't matter as much because I've got no power connected right now to the circuit, but let's have a look at what happens when we turn to the software. So from a software perspective, it's really simple. We're just gonna use everything from the music tab. So you can play individual tones and string them together into melodies. You can do things like play ringtones, start pre-built melodies. So you can see there, there's a drop down that you can play whatever you wish. So if I want to play a single note on pressing button A, it's as simple as that. Go ahead, download your code and try it out. So with such a simple bit of code, you can get some music going from your little speaker. Now, of course, that's a basic thing. So if you want to make things more complicated, you might add a sensor that'll activate the speaker in different scenarios, or maybe like a car reversing, the closer you get to the device, the faster that the speaker plays a note, etc. So there's loads you can do with it. It's a great tool for sensing. So the speaker really comes into its own when you combine it with other tools. So two of my favorite devices that you can use along with the speaker is this, this is an ultrasonic distance sensor. So it works a little, little bit like a bat in echolocation. It sends out a sound here that we can't hear. The sound bounces off an object in front of it and travels back and it's sensed by this side. And it times how long it takes the sound to bounce back. And using that, it can determine the distance to an object in front of the sensor. So they're really cool. So you could use this as an alarm if somebody comes within so far off your device, it'll send off a beep through the uh, speaker. So I'm gonna demo that now in a second. The other device that's quite handy, or the other sensor, is this. This is a motion sensor. So again, it doesn't work with distance. It simply detects motion, and you can use that detection to then trigger your speaker. So this little one that I've set up now looks quite complicated because I've got a breadboard and stuff, but I've got an ultrasonic distance sensor. And basically I've set it up so that if anything comes within four inches off the sensor, 
it'll trigger my speaker alarm. So let's just try it out. So that's a pretty cool start. You've now used your speaker with an ultrasonic distance sensor and I'll have another video on the ultrasonic distance sensor as well as the motion sensor.